Hello all. So in today's video session, we will have a look at the Young's procedure. Although obsolete, but it is still in use for many procedures. This gentleman had a history of recurrent epistaxis. It was torrential. What you can see over here are crusts. They are because of septal perforation. Now, how did he get the septal perforation? That is quite interesting. Because of repeated epistaxis, he had multiple cauterizations. This led to necrosis of the cartilage because of loss of blood supply. First and foremost, we gave a thorough wash. Now this wash is essential because we are going to close the nose. Yes, that's what a Young's procedure is. Young's procedure was first done by Austin Young in 1963 from Sheffield, hence the name. So after giving thorough wash, when we are happy that there are no debris left, there is no sign of infection, we can proceed with the surgery. Now this was especially a challenging case as there was hardly any tissue to raise the flap. This patient had HHT, which is autosomal dominant condition. Now this is very interesting that we have to trim the nasal hair. Why do you need to do that? It sounds funny and ridiculous, but there are multiple benefits. Number one, it, it provides good exposure, good closure and better healing. Ultimately, we want a uh, good healing. Once the trimming is done and we have nicely decongested, we can raise the flaps. Now, raising the flaps is very crucial. These are the skin and the mucosal flaps which are raised along the LR rim, the anterior part of septum and the floor. Mucosal flap which is raised posteriorly, it forms the second layer of the closure and the skin forms the first layer. Ultimately, the aim is to get a good closure so that no air goes in. As you can see, I am using neuropathies. They are very nice and comfortable and we can use in between flaps in the plane to get a good hemostasis. The best way to achieve these flaps are by having incision over the mucocutaneous junction. It can be a circumferential incision or you can make separate incisions. The point is that we need a good flap and a tension-free closure. I do like to infiltrate before elevating the flap and you can use 15 size blade to make the incision or you can also use a monopolar. I would recommend to use a 15 size blade. In this particular case, it was difficult to get a flap from the septal aspect. After securing the flaps, with a tie, I used a silk first to make sure that I am approximating well. You can see this is the first layer and we are trying to make sure that we are getting a good approximation. We do want tension-free sutures so you can take extra bit of tissue to close it. If the approximation is too tight, there is a high chance of dehiscence. And the last thing we want is the approximation to fail using assistance and this procedure will require 400 technique using assistance what you need to do is make sure that you're getting good support to get a good approximation now this is what we are trying to get a good approximation and as you can see this is good enough tension free closure and this is what the outcome will be the closure can be done using proline or vicryl the inner layer can have a vicryl on it and the outer rail can have proline on it. One small tip regarding this procedure is make sure that there's a good hemostasis and you can use whatever you want, in this case using a gel-like hemostatic agent because after closure, if at all there is bleeding, it's going to go in the posterior coana and we'll have to open the closure, that is the Young's procedure, to control the bleeding. So make sure that the hemostasis is proper. As you can see, those are the stay sutures. It's very easy. It's just a technical thing that you need to be really careful and meticulous and make sure that approximation is good. Try to get a good flap and large flap. Trying to see if this is sealing well. And yes, it does. 
So what is the post-operative care that you can take? Number one is a good course of antibiotic because there is a small margin of error. Actually, there is no margin of error. The moment the patient will have infection, we cannot do endoscopy examination and we'll have to open the nose. So the best thing to do is give a good antibiotic course. Also, in such kind of patients, you can also give a good course of uh, trinexamic acid. You can see we have used bipolar to achieve hemostasis. As this is a special case of HHT and Young's procedure, we are now doing only reserving for patients with uh, bleeding disorders. This is the final outcome that you can see. Both the sides, the nasal opening are closed, approximated well, and there is no further bleeding. Quite satisfying. The patient is followed up on 2nd, 4th and 6th week, then after every 2 months. We can prescribe topical ointment and also Vaseline application. This will help in healthy healing. Although initially, Young's procedure was started for atropic rhinitis, now it's mainly done as a last reserve for bleeding disorders. We do require patient's motivation, but these patients, because they had so many visits in the a &E and had blood transfusions, they are very keen for the surgery. They are very well motivated. They want a good quality of life. They want to sleep without having any blood loss. This is an hemostatic agent we have used to uh, get final hemostasis and it it acts by activating the coagulation cascade. Thank you for watching. Please write down any comments or any questions that you have. Thank you.